Hey, what's up everybody? In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking the miniature train and we're actually going to be assembling it. So up until this point, you've created all the parts for your miniature train project. Now we're going to be taking all those parts, bringing them into the IEM environment and basically putting everything together with inventor glue. Um, that's basically what we are calling our assembly constraints. There's really only going to be one uh, type of assembly constraint we're going to be using for a good majority of this. Uh, and that is something called the insert constraint. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is come up here and go to new and looking into your English template folder, you're going to be finding your standard inch IEM and you're going to go ahead and say create. Next thing you're going to be doing is starting to bring parts in. So think about this as taking parts and putting them onto a desk or putting them onto a floor where you can actually assemble it. Okay. Like a Lego set. More than likely, you're going to be seeing something up here called Place from Content Center, and that is usually the default setting for all assemblies uh, in Inventor. Uh, so the thing is, is that Place from Content Center is going to take you out to kind of like an online hardware store. So think of it as like an online Ace hardware where you can go and get parts that are already pre-drawn or modeled, and you can use those to bring those in. In our case, we don't need to do that because we have already the, the you know the parts that we need. They've already been modeled. Uh, or we've already modeled those, so we're going to be wanting to bring those in. So instead of going to place from content center, we're going to just go simply to place. Now, hopefully you've done everything correct so far, where you have created a folder, and then <clears throat> within that folder, you have created and saved all of your parts. Remember, Inventor is happiest when you have a folder for a particular project, and everything is in one single folder. So if you haven't done that, Make sure you're going out and doing that first before you even get started with the assembly. All right, so since we have all of our parts in one single folder, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be going out and selecting a base component. A base component is basically going to be sort of our foundation in which everything is sort of built upon. So train body is going to be our best candidate. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on train body and hit open. And when I, uh, as soon as I finish doing that, we can see that now this train body is going to be going out there and basically following wherever your cursor is at. So just simply go ahead and pick to place that part in. And if I move off of this, we can see it's wanting to do a duplicate. Obviously, we only need one train body, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape. All right, so we have our train body that is out there in our environment. And the first rule of thumb when it comes to assemblies is as soon as you bring in your base component, you must always ground it. It does not matter what the orientation is. Just go ahead and ground it. So the, what we're going to do first is, because is, right now, if I grab this, I can see that I can move this. So what you need to do first is, is right click on top of that, <clears throat> that component, that part that we just brought in. <clears throat> we're going to right click and we're going to come down and find grounded. And now when I go to actually move this, we can see that's basically stuck. And even right there at the cursor, we can see the thumbtack it is basically telling us that, hey, this is pinned to its location. It's not going to move. And oh, by the way, we can also see that over here. Okay, we can see the icon right here on top of our little cube icon for our IPT is also indicating that that has been grounded. All right, so I'm not liking the orientation of this because right now this is considered to be our home view. Up here, we can see a home icon to the top left-hand corner of our view cube. If I pick on that, all right, this is always going to reorient this back to this home view. That is not a good home view for me because while well, we're looking at the back of the train. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to be using these preset corners of the view cube and get it into this orientation here where I'm looking at this from the front uh, left side of the actual train body. Once I have it in this location, now I can come back up here, go to my home view icon, right click on it, and just simply pick set current view as home and then fit to view. The other issue is, is that if we kind of look close enough here to our view cube, it's indicating that this face that we're looking at here is the back of the train. That is also not correct. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick on this face. Okay. I can see that that is the front of the train, but it's indicating that that is the back on the view cube. I want to reorient the view cube where this is actually going to be showing as front and not back. So in order to do that, once again, we come to the home icon. I right click. I come down. I pick on set current view as and then just select and toggle to front. So now if I come up here, hit the home icon, we can see it goes into our home view. And if we look close enough at the view cube, we can now see that that face of the view cube is now indicating that that is the front, which is actually correct for our train body. All right, so our train body has been fully 
uh, grounded and we can see that we have now just gone out there and changed up our view cube and we've reset our home icon, or I'm sorry, our home view. Now we can start bringing in the other parts. So I'm gonna come out here and go to place. I'm gonna just come right up here from the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and pick on wheel. I'm gonna say open. I'm gonna be basically positioning that in these four pos uh, positions where I'm kind of laying these out just like we would with a model or a toy, just sort of getting things organized. I know that they're not in the right orientation. I'll show you how to fix that in just a minute. I'm now going to go to place. I'm going to go up the list. Train body is already in. So stack, we're going to go ahead and open and just put in one stack. I'm going to go to place again. Go to linkage peg. I'm going to place in one, two, three, and four linkage pegs. I'm going to go to place. Come up here and find linkage arm. I'm going to need one and two of those. Come up here, go to place. I'm going to come and find uh, hitch peg. Place that in the back. Go to place again, find my hitch magnet. I'm gonna need one of those in the back. I'm gonna to go, to go to place again and find our cow catcher. We're gonna need one of those. That's gonna be placed towards the front. And finally, I need to come out here and find axle peg. I'm gonna need four of those. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we have all the parts we need. They're laying on the desk. Now we can start getting started with our assembly. Okay, so the next thing I wanna be showing you you can only do this it's a, like kind of our second rule i said first rule is you always make sure it's grounded uh, second rule is is that we want to sort of tweak these parts and you don't have to do this i just find it to be a little bit easier like for example like like look at our wheels right now they're laying flat and they need to be reoriented where they're kind of going up in the right direction you can only do this next step if the first part that you bring in has been fully grounded. And I just, you just saw me do that earlier. Okay, but just remember, you can't move on to this next step what I'm about to show you unless you have your first part that is fully grounded. Okay, so since this is fully grounded, what I'm gonna tell you to do is come here and pick on something called free rotate and then actually pick on the wheel. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just, you know, I'm gonna show you, if you're on the inside of the globe, this is gonna be acting like a free orbit, okay? If we come here to the outside of the globe, we can see how the icon changes where this is gonna be a constrained orbit. So it's gonna be constrained along the Z axis, okay? If I come up here to this bar, now this is gonna be constrained to the X axis. And if I come to this bar, it's gonna be constrained to the Y. So you have some different options. That's what I'm trying to get at. But what I've kind of found is, is that you're basically able to kind of get where you want to be just by staying inside the globe. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, free rotate and get all four of these wheels sort of in the right orientation. And let's get number three here. That's in the right orientation. And then free rotate for number four. Let's get that in the right rotation. Okay, so right orientation for all four of those are pretty close. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be kind of building, um, this is like its own little sub-assembly ahead of time. So I want to take the axle peg and put it into the hole and make sure that this top is actually setting on top of this portion of the wheel. In order to do that, we have to use like the inventor glue, and the inventor glue is something called assembly constraints. So if I come up here, I can see that constraint is an option, and you're going to see that there are one, two, three, four, five different assembly constraints. The first one is called mate, the second one is called angle, the third one is tangent, the fourth one is insert, and the fifth one is symmetry. For a good chunk of this project, we're only going to be focusing on the fourth one, which is insert. So I want to insert the peg into the hole. So I'm going to be picking on insert. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to be doing is, and the best way I can explain this, is think about edges that are going to be making contact with edges. So if I flip this over, and by the way, if you're wondering how I'm doing orbit so quickly, is if you hold down shift and hold down the scroll wheel and move your mouse, it's going to be a free orbit on the fly. You also have the ability to come up here and just press down on the left mouse button and do an orbit that way. It's going to be a constrained orbit. It's a little bit clunky. And then obviously you still have your presets in view cube if you want to use those. I would highly recommend you start figuring out how to hold down shift key, hold down the scroll wheel, and do an orbit on the fly. That's going to be a true free orbit, and that is the way you really want to assemble. It's much, much easier. Okay, so back where I was at, I'm going to be orbiting this 
axle peg over, coming here to the bottom and thinking about what edges are going to be making contact with what other edges. So I know that this edge here, I just lost it. I'm going to pick on that edge is going to be making contact with this edge. I'm going to go ahead and pick on that. Okay. When you do this properly, you're going to, it's going to sound like a little pebble being dropped into a bucket. Okay. It's indicating that those two have been constrained. Okay, so that is done. Now, if for some reason the peg is not going in the hole in the right direction, okay, like something like this, just know that you have two different solutions. There's something called an opposed and there's something called aligned. All right, so maybe if something's not going in, just know you can always do the switch on the solution, okay, to get it what it is you're looking for. So I'm liking this one. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. All right, so I'm going to come back into constraint again, go into insert. I'm going to be flipping this over, and now I'm going to be coming in and finding my next edge. So I'm going to say that edge there needs to be making contact with the edge at the top of the hole. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply, okay, and cancel out. All right, so when I have done this, what's going to be happening is, is that this wheel is able to spin freely, and this axle peg is able to spin freely as well. Now the problem is, is the axle peg is actually threaded. Okay, we have a hole on the train body that is threaded, so this shouldn't actually be able to spin. So let me just show you quickly how to go out there and fix that. So I'm going to go to constraint. I'm now going to be heading to my second constraint, which is called an angular constraint. I'm going to be picking on the first solution. And I'm going to come in here and get close in on this axle peg. I'm going to pick this face. I'm going to flip this over, look at the bottom of our train body, pick on that. And now there is a zero degree angle that's locked in for that axle peg. So if I come back and try to move it, nothing is going to move. All right, so you're gonna be carrying on and doing the same thing for uh, the other three wheels and the axle pegs, getting that to be fully constrained. Okay, so now that we've done that, we have all four wheels with the axle pegs, okay, and everything is, um, you know, been inserted into the train body. So we can go ahead and just keep working with this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I don't know, let's just go to stack next. I'm gonna come here to go to con, uh, constrain. I'm gonna be picking on insert once again. I'll be picking this bottom edge and that needs to be making contact with this bottom edge of the hole. I hit apply. Notice how I'm not even getting out of this, all right? At first, I'm, I was kind of showing that to you just to kind of get the hang of using constraints, but we can actually keep that open, all right? So as soon as I hit apply, now I can go ahead and just sort of keep moving. All right, so I'm gonna come here to the back I'm looking for the bottom edge of this head of this bolt, and I'm going to be making contact, okay, with the top edge of this hole right here. I'm going to hit apply, and then once again, I'm just keeping that dialog box open because I can come here now and use an insert at that edge and have that make contact with that edge of that hole and hit apply. Okay, so we have our hitch magnet and our hitch peg attached to the back. Okay, now we have our cow catcher on the front. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this because I do want to use fro front, uh, free rotate to pick on our cow catcher and just sort of nudge this in the right direction. There, it's going to make things a little bit easier. And now I can go ahead and use constrain. Insert. I'm going to be looking for the base of the peg, not the top, the base of it, and making sure that that is going to be aligned okay, to the top edge of this hole and hit apply. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. And I'm showing you uh, canceling out because what might happen is it might be sitting here like this and you're going to have a hard time seeing the peg in the hole. So I'm showing you this because you can just simply grab a hold of the cow catcher, pick it, hold it, and pull it down to rotate it. Now I can see the peg is exposed and I can also see that the hole is exposed. So I'm going to use constrain again, use insert, and now I'm going to be picking the base of the peg and picking the top of the hole, hitting apply, and now cow catcher has been fully constrained to the front of the train body. All right, so all that's left now are the linkage arms and the linkage pegs. All right, um, just uh, like we've been doing before, we're going to go ahead and use insert. I'm going to go to constrain, go to insert, and I'm going to be saying I want uh, the bottom of this hole to be making contact with the base of this peg that's on top. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, pick the bottom of the hole, and I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the base of this peg, and I'm going to hit apply. So now once this happens, you're going to be able to grab that wheel, and it's going to be able to start, you know, it's going to have a relationship there. Okay, it's going to be able to actually spin. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for the other side as well. So going into constraint, going into insert, 
I'm going to be saying I want the base of this hole to be making contact with the base of that cylinder. I'm going to hit apply. And now flipping this over, coming to the base of the hole again, picking on that. <clears throat> I'm now going to be coming here to the base of this cylinder and hit apply. Okay, so this is also going to be doing the same sort of thing it was doing on the other side. Going into constraint, I can use insert again. Okay, I'm going to be picking the base of this head. Okay, to the top of this hole. And same thing here, it's going to be the base of the head, making contact with the top of this hole. Same thing here, base of the head into the top of the hole. Hit apply. And same thing here, base of the head to the top of the hole. Okay, so we now we have our entire miniature train. This thing has been totally assembled, okay, and is ready to go. All right, so <clears throat> what we want to do now is we want to animate this. We actually want to see this thing actually working. Um, so I think what we're going to do is, is um, I think we can make this work. just want to make sure I got this right. What I'm going to do now is, is um, I'm actually going to constrain. Um, I'm going to be using make constraint this time. I'm going to be coming here and just coming up close to this cylinder, you're going to see an axis show up. I'm going to go ahead and pick on that axis, and I'm going to actually have that mate or align to this axis right here and hit apply. Because now when I go ahead and grab this wheel, they're both going to be doing this align just like if it's an actual train. I understand it's Boeing and it's doing silly things right now, uh, but I think I'm going to be able to get that fixed here in just a, uh, a second. All right, so now what I want to do is actually apply an angular constraint from the wheel to the actual um, base of the actual train. In order to do that, what I'm going to have to do is go in and turn on a work plane uh, that is uh, actually in our wheel. If you have created this correctly using the video tutorials I've shown you with the wheel, um, then we can make the next part of this work. So if we double click on any part in here, that's actually going to be showing everything else go transparent. Right now, everything is grayed out over here in the browser, except for what we see here on the left hand side in, in the, uh, the browser here. Whatever is in white is basically telling us the makeup of uh, the actual wheel itself. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come up here, find origin. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And now I want one of these planes that goes right down the center of it. So that would be a candidate or that would be a candidate. It does not matter in our case. I'm going to right click on this plane and I'm going to go ahead and just turn on visibility. Okay, so now what we've just done is we've turned on the visibility of a work plane that we can now use to apply an angular constraint. The problem that we have right now is right now we're still only talking to the wheel IPT. We want to get back into the assembly. So in order to do that, we come up here to this button that says return. We pick it, and now we're back in the actual assembly. All right. So now what we want to do is use constraint. We want to use an angular constraint in the first solution. What we're going to do is we're actually going to pick on the work plane. We're going to flip this over and now pick the base of the actual train body. And now we're going to see how that goes to zero degrees. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. All right. I'm doing that because now what we can do is I'm going to put this in the front view. I'm actually going to come here now to my angular constraint. I'm going to right click and I'm going to be picking on drive. What you're able to do now is tell it what angle you want to start at and what angle you want to finish at. So if I want two full rotations, that would be 720 degrees. Okay, and now I can hit the play button. All right, and it's actually going to be showing this animated. And look, the behavior of the linkage arm is actually correct. So what's great for us is now what we can do is I'm going to just start this from the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. It's going to be now asking me what I want to save this as. So I'm going to go into my miniature train project and I'm going to say I want this to be miniature train project animation. Okay, you're going to see how it's going to save it as a WMV or an AVI file. I don't think it really even matters. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Okay, it's now going to allow me to choose what my, you know, my image size is and you know, my network bandwidth. I think we can go ahead and just leave this at broadband 
And I'm going to go ahead and just pick on custom. And I think it's going to adjust to the actual screen resolution or a screen display of your actual monitor. I'm going to go ahead and say OK on that. Uh, maybe it didn't like it. I'm just going to switch this over to 640 by 480. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button. And now what's cool is, is that now that I'm actually playing this, it's actually going to be recording this for the full 720 degrees. Okay, now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now if I just minimize this and I go into my folder where my miniature train stuff is at, Okay, I should be seeing that animation. So let's go here to desktop and then let's see, where's my miniature train? There it is. And I should be seeing a video file in here. So miniature train project animation. All right, and there it's actually showing this thing animated. Now the only issue is, is that I actually forgot to turn off the work planes before I did this. So that kind of looks hideous. So let me show you how you can actually fix that. So back into Inventor, I can double click on the wheel I can come up here underneath the origin folder, so make sure it's expanded out. I can now come to my YZ plane or whatever plane you were using, right click on it, and now I can go ahead and uncheck visibility, return back to my assembly, and now I can come down here to my angle, right click on it, okay, go ahead and do the drive, okay, I'm going to say I want to record this, and I'm just going to save this right over the top of the old one. And uh, let's see, I'm going to keep that 640 by 480. I'm going to say OK, and now I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button. And now it's actually going to record that again. Okay, now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out on that. Come out here, let's just take a look at that. So, miniature train, there's my animation. So, this is going to be showing how this thing actually is animated. So, it's basically showing that your, um, you know, that your assembly constraints are actually working. Even though we got some weird stuff going on with the wheels, it's going in the opposite direction. That's okay. All right, so it's actually going to be showing the animation of it, showing that it's actually able to work. Okay, so that is how you create that video. Okay, and in the end with this assembly, okay, what it is you need to do is go ahead and do a save on this. Okay, and save that into the correct folder with all of your other parts. So that's the animation. Uh, that's showing how to do the assembly constraints and, and all that wonderful stuff. Also showing how to reorient views uh, as far as home view goes, front view, uh, how to ground parts. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, but it's really kind of an introduction to how to get your assembly correct. So there you go. Good luck with that. Have fun.